I'm preparing a sweet treat to get us through another sour release. Stick with me while I roast some marshmallows and a little SketchUp too. In this video, I'm gonna review SketchUp 2023 from my perspective, that of a residential designer who uses SketchUp Pro for every phase of the design process, even my permit drawings. You might wonder, why do I make these honest reviews? Well, you want the truth, right? Not surface skimming demos and flattery. And here's some truth. I'm frustrated that Trimble is diluting SketchUp and abandoning the core user base. More on that later. And why a roast? Well, that's just me having a little bit of fun. Let's stoke the fire and take a look at what's new in SketchUp 2023. The new flip tool can be found on the large tool set. You can either pre-select an entity or activate the flip tool and click on an entity. You will see transparent red, green, and blue mirror planes appear on the corresponding axis. Click on a mirror plane to flip the geometry. Tap the control key, option on Mac, to toggle copy, which leaves the original in place. Click and drag to move the mirror plane. On release, the geometry flips. You know what I'm about to say, right? I already have more than enough flipping tools. Sure, right-click flip along was a little confusing, but it worked. And now it's no longer in the right-click context menu where you used to find it. You can still add keyboard shortcuts for flipping on each axis, which is actually pretty nice. Scale to negative one about the center is far from an intuitive way to mirror, but always gets it done. And TIG's free mirror plugin has been around forever, along with several others. I don't need another mirror tool. I don't think this solves a problem or that there even was a problem to solve. Up next, overlays. This is a new SketchUp API capability, which allows extensions to overlay information on the screen, even while using other tools and extensions. This could be interesting. This new dialog allows you to manage overlays created by different extensions. Click the discover more button to see some extensions that are using this new functionality. Unfortunately, at the time of this recording, there's only four. I don't imagine overlays are gonna blow my socks off, but it's early, so, I'll keep an open mind and an eye out for extensions leveraging this new capability. There's a few more small tweaks to the behavior of existing tools, but that's it. That's what's new in SketchUp Pro 2023 desktop version. Not a whole lot. While this delivery feels like yet another light envelope, keep in mind the Trimble team has been working on big efforts outside of SketchUp Pro for desktop. Like the new SketchUp for iPad, just out of beta last year. It's so cool that I can use the Apple Pencil to scribble shapes that turn into objects to make these amazing designs. You know what? I can't do it. Let's address the elephant in the room. SketchUp for iPad is not a professional modeling tool. It's slow, cumbersome, and frustrating to use. <laughs> Easy, big fella. Let me explain. You see, tablets are devices for consumption, not production. I'm willing to read emails on an iPad, but not write them. Just like I'm willing to view SketchUp models on an iPad, which we've been able to do for years, but I have no need to actually work on models on an iPad. I am infinitely faster with a keyboard and mouse. Let's talk about the suggested use cases. Imagine if you're in the field and want to make notes on the model while walking the job. There are some pretty slick new markup capabilities in SketchUp for iPad. Why not just add these markup tools to the iPad viewer? Another use case I've heard many propose is recording existing conditions. Now, there is no way I'm going to measure with a tape and then use an Apple Pencil to model a whole room accurately, let alone a whole house while I'm in the field. No way. I reach for a different app, Canvas. It's the reason I bought the new iPad. I can scan a whole house in less than an hour, upload to their scan to CAD service, and roughly three days later, they shoot over a meticulously organized existing condition SketchUp model. I'm a huge fan of this service. I then use the Conduct Tools plan generator to automate scenes and send them to layout as scaled architectural drawings. That's how you kick off a project. Look, I'm not saying that SketchUp for iPad doesn't work or that it's not neat the way you scribble and it turns into an object. It demos well. I'm saying that for me, a residential designer, there's no improved experience, no expanded functionality, no increased efficiency, and it has no place in my workflow. Let's try that again. Live components were introduced in 2021. I actually haven't paid that much attention to them because until recently, you couldn't create them yourself. Live components are basically another type of dynamic component that you configure on the 3D warehouse, then download and insert into your model. So in SketchUp 2023, there's some improvements to the load time and reliability of live components. Also, you can now configure them right inside of SketchUp. Sounds good. Let's take a look. Here's a live component of a framed wall. Double click with the select tool to open the live component dialog and reconfigure as you like. Unfortunately, you're limited to one door and one window. Now, let's say you need this wall to do something a little different. 
Maybe you want to add an option for another opening. No problem. At Basecamp last fall, Trimble Creator was launched as a public beta, allowing anyone to build and edit configurable SketchUp models with visual-based programs. Just right-click on the live component and choose Open in Trimble Creator. Trimble Creator allows you to create parametric graphs with nodes and connections forming relationships controlled by user choices that ultimately create and modify geometry. This is so far over my head, and frankly, something I'm not interested in learning as a residential designer. Sorting out Denver's setbacks, stepbacks, and bulk planes is enough brain damage. So I'm definitely not going to edit this graph. Get me back in SketchUp. To edit this live component as SketchUp Geometry, I need to right click on the frame wall and choose Detach Definition. Now, this is just a plain old SketchUp component. I can work with that. Double click in, and now you can push pull a face. I'll wait. If I turn on hidden geometry, you can see that all of the faces are triangulated. So you can't push pull without a fair amount of cleanup. I don't like that at all. Now here's the one, two punch that knocks live components right out of my workflow. Notice that the repeating elements are unique group, not components. There's no intelligence remaining. And to assign tags to entities within the live component, I have to detach the definition. What I'm saying is that you can't bake SketchUp tags into a live component. That's a deal breaker for me. And finally, from a user experience perspective, it feels restricting to configure everything through a dialog rather than stretching and snapping to my model like I do with a dynamic component. You can see here how our conduct window dynamic component snaps to the rough opening, then rebuilds itself with a 3D object for sections, elevations, and perspectives, and a 2D graphic for plans, each on their own respective tags already baked into the dynamic component. Plus, it reports a designation back to layout. How cool is that? So in my opinion, any problem that Live Components claims to solve has already been better solved by dynamic components and extensions. Look, if you're in the position where you need a realistic detailed model of a wall, you need the Medik Engineering extension. Look at this wall tool that adds all of the framing, sheathing, jip board, and more. It's infinitely configurable and easy to add as many openings as you need wherever you want them. Then use the Medik Truss extension to add extremely realistic roof framing components. All geometry is grouped, tagged, and completely compatible with my Conduct Tools extension. These tools together are insanely powerful. So I'm not thrilled with this new release. Despite being impressive technological feats, these new features and products aren't useful to the core customer base. And who's that? Well, I'm gonna say architects and interior designers. Just look at the industries listed at sketchup.com. And here's who attends the SketchUp Basecamp conference. Architecture and interior design together net over half the attendees. So I would say the majority of SketchUp users need traditional 2D drawings on paper. And I'll bet only a fraction of them are using layout. So most designers are stuck duplicating efforts in another drafting program. I hear it all the time. I wish Trimble would stop tinkering with all these peripheral products that should be plugins. In many cases, Cases, there's already better third-party solutions than what's being developed in-house. I don't need to model on an iPad, and I don't need a convoluted new way to create components. Just like I don't need another Dropbox, dumbed-down passive design advice, or augmented reality that runs on a $3,500 headset. Stop chasing squirrels, and instead focus on the core offering, SketchUp and Layout for desktop. Easy 3D models linked to beautiful 2D drawings. That's the problem to solve. Be the best at that. I'm just echoing what my colleagues have been shouting for years. Fix layout. The disruption layout could cause in the AEC drafting market is paramount. They could just get a little attention. I still love SketchUp. With the right extensions and workflow, it's incredible what I can accomplish. And I have nothing but admiration and respect for the Trimble team. And I believe they are working hard, but I see that their efforts are scattered. And where there is a focus push, it's in the wrong direction. Ah, what the hell do I know? Maybe I'm a dinosaur. I do still call back when I get a text, and if they don't answer, I always leave a voicemail. So how about this? You tell me in the comments where I got it wrong. Or maybe you agree. Either way, I'm psyched to hear from you. Now, if you need some good news, check out our brand new conduct tags in this video. Multiple SketchUp tags applied to one object makes model organization a breeze. Or here's my layout 2023 toast. I'll see you in there. I'm even hungry.